Hello everyone, and welcome to our guide on the first five things you should do after getting your Quest 2. And at the end of the video, I will show you one thing you can do to significantly extend your game time. So, you just got your brand new Quest 2, and you're really excited to dive into virtual reality, but before you do, there are a few things you should do to protect your investment and enhance your experience. First up on the list, you need to protect your lenses. I cannot stress this enough. The Quest 2 has high quality lenses that are prone to being scratched and prone to taking sun damage, so it's important to take some steps to protect them. I had to learn this the hard way, as the first Quest 2 I got had to be returned due to damaged lenses, so protect your lenses. You should buy yourself a microfiber cloth to keep your lenses clean and when I'm using it, I ensure the cloth is free of dust and debris before I use it and I wipe the lenses both before and after use. You want to keep the lenses away from direct sunlight as they could get damaged if exposed to it and finally, you should get a lens cover for when the headset is not in use. There are a myriad of ways the lenses could get dinged and keeping a lens cover on them when not in use goes a long way to protecting them. Next up, properly adjusting your IPD. The Quest 2 has adjustable interpupillary distance or IPD, say that three times quick, <laughs> that allows you to align the lenses with your eyes. This is crucial for several reasons. For clarity of image, the lenses have a sweet spot in the middle that you need to align your eyes to. In addition, if you're not using the proper IPD, it puts strain on your eyes. The Quest 2 has three IPD settings you adjust manually. One is 58 millimeters to 61 millimeters. Two is 61 millimeters to 66 millimeters. And three is 66 millimeters to 68 millimeters. So, how can you find out your IPD? There are a number of tools you can use. I personally like to use the Glasses On app. You will need to get a standard credit card to begin. And then once the app is open, you need to click the Start PD. And then follow the prompts. That you have your IPD number, use that to find the right IPD setting for you. Next level trick here, you can place the IPD knob between the numbers for a more refined setting. Our third tip is to get a fan to blow on you while you play. Most of us have fans just lying around our place and if you don't, they are relatively affordable on Amazon or even at your local stores. If you're someone who will need to overcome the motion sickness some of us experience before the acclimate to VR, having a fan blow on you is something that can help tremendously. And I speak as someone who did have to overcome motion sickness. In addition, even if you're a veteran of VR, having a fan blowing on you can help keep you cool, it could stop you from sweating too much and potentially fogging the lenses. And I find for me, a fan blowing on me adds a little something extra to my VR experience. Our fourth tip is to not rely too much on the Guardian. The Guardian is the Quest 2's built-in boundary system that helps prevent you from running into walls and objects. However, it is not foolproof. It's important to be aware of your surroundings and not rely solely on the Guardian to keep you safe. I have personally on many occasions before I adopted the next tip, slammed my hand and controllers into walls and sliding glass doors and lucky for me, I haven't broken anything yet, but many have. So this brings me to our next tip. Get a small mat or rug to stand on. This can help you stay centered in your play area and prevent you from getting too close to walls and objects. There are many pricey options on the market, but you don't have to buy anything fancy to achieve this goal. Do you have a small bathroom or kitchen mat or rug lying around? Then use that. 
All you really need is something you can stand on that gives you a tactile feel that's different than the rest of the floor so you can feel when you've moved beyond where you want to stand. I personally use a small rug that I used to keep in front of my stove and it works just fine for me. Moving on to your bonus tip, the Quest 2's battery life is about 2-ish hours and in VR 2 hours is nothing so we need to extend that with an external battery. And while there are a lot of good upgradable head straps for the Quest 2 with hot swappable batteries, they start off pricey and just get more so when you end up buying more batteries which you will need to do. That is why I started off using the Anchor 10,000 milliamp battery pack with a 6 foot Ugreen USB to USB-C cable. Link is in the description. Total cost around $25 and I found the battery pack added about 4 hours to my playtime. The process is simple enough. You plug the cable into the headset, then into your battery, and run the battery down the back of your shirt to keep it out of your way, and you store it in your pocket. Did you find these tips helpful? Let me know in the comments, and if you have any other suggestions, be sure to let me know those as well. And thanks for watching, and happy gaming!